In this video, we shall understand what is MVVM and how MVVM architecture works. MVVM stands for Model View and View Model, where model represents the business logic, entities, data or repositories, etc. And view represents the user interface to be displayed for the end users. And view model takes the responsibility of the view, which means that whatever the data the view has to display, the view model has to expose the data to the view using the properties. And if any actions that is events has to take place within the view, such as a button click, then the logic for handling that events should be maintained by the view model using the comments. Now, if you observe these three circles, then if anyone has a prior knowledge on MVC, that is model view controller architecture, then this also looks somewhat similar, right? But what makes the difference means in MVC architecture, the request will be given to the controllers where the controllers will manage the entire request response pipelines and it will completely orchestrate the request response. So whenever the request is accepted by the controller, then it will decide if there is a need for a view to display the result or do we require some other type of content to be displayed as the response. If the result requires the data, then it will interact with the model and provides the data to the view, which will be given as the response from the controller. Whereas within the MVVM architecture, the request will be given to the view and we know that the responsibility of the view will be taken care by the view model. So immediately the request will be given to the relevant view model and if there is a requirement for accessing the data from the model, then the view model will interact with the model and provides that data to the view using the properties. And if any actions are performed on the view, then the commands which are binded with the view will be invoked from the view model to perform the relevant actions. Remember that the view can never interact with the model directly. And also, if the view model requires to interact with the model, it can also take the support of some services. And also remember one important point. It is not mandatory to write the entire business logic within the view model also. We can write the logic in some service and we can invoke the logic from the actions of the view model. One more important point that we need to remember here is that it is always advisable to use one view model for one view which means that never create a view model to take the responsibility of more than one view. Hello friends, before I continue with this video, just a small information to be passed. This video is a part of my food ordering app course on Xamarin Forms for Beginners. This course consists of six modules where I have already uploaded five modules for this course. Very soon, I will be uploading the last module also. You can now watch the finished application on the screen. If you are interested in subscribing this course for $10, please click on the link present within the description to subscribe the course. Thank you. Now let us understand the MVVM architecture using a simple scenario for better understanding. Let us say we have a model with the name users where the entity consists of username, password, email ID and the mobile number. Now, let us assume that I wanted to create some view for allowing the users to log in to our application. For that, we will be creating a login view, right? So my login view might consist of username, password, remember me and a login button. Now to support this login view requirement, we will be creating a login view model, okay? So what does this login view model needs means? We have three controls for which we need to bind the data. So it will be essential for us to define three properties. 
at the login view model to bind the data of the username, password and the remember me checkbox. And along with that, we have a login button and our requirement would be whenever the user clicks on the login button, we need to verify the user credentials and to allow the user to access the app if the credentials belongs to a valid user. Else, we would like to show some error. This will be the most common requirement, right? For that, instead of writing the business logic to verify the user credentials at the button click, we need to bind that button event handler with the command object. For example, login command. And this login command will be binded with the action, for example, login, which is used to perform the user credential validations. Similarly, let us assume that we wanted to create some another view, for example, register view for registering the new users, where the UI which is required for our requirement will be username, password, confirm password, and along with that, we would like to have a register button to register the user within the model. So for this requirement, again, we need to create a new view model, for example, register view model. And since we have three controls for which we need to bind the data, we need to define three properties at the view model that is username, password and the confirm password. And along with that, we need to define a register command which will be binded with the action register for registering the user. Now, if you observe the view models, we can notice that there are some properties such as username, password has been duplicated. Many a times we might have heard a statement stating when you write a program, always follow dry approach that is don't repeat yourself approach. In simple terms, it means avoid duplication of coding. So what many people do is instead of creating two view models, they will be creating a view model such as security view model and they will be defining the properties such as username, password, confirm password, is persistent, login command, register command, login and register functions within that class and we'll try to use the same view model across the login view and also the register view. Technically, will it be possible means yes, it will be possible because these are just classes. But when we follow MVVM architecture, it is always advisable to create a single view model for a view. If you observe for the login view, we don't require the confirm password, register command or registered methods. So the view model which takes the responsibility of the login view doesn't have to maintain these additional members. Now just understand one important point. Whenever we are using MVVM, don't think of writing a dry program. Instead, just understand the requirement of the view and how to provide everything what the view needs. Okay. And remember that it is not mandatory to write the entire business logic within the view model. We can define a class, for example, authentication surface, which might have some methods such as validate, which might accept the username and the password for performing the validations and method like register which might accept the username and the password for registering the user with the model and these methods can be accessed from the login action of login view model and the register action of register view model. Before we continue, let us have a small observation. In order to bind the data between the view and view model, I notify property changed properties should be used so that if any data changes occurs, it will be reflected on the UI. In order to perform some actions, whenever an event is raised, 
then command objects can be assigned to the events so that whenever the event is raised by the client the relevant command object will be executed now let us understand some of the advantages what we will get if we follow mvvm architecture better separation of concerns since we will be separating the ui and the business logic it becomes easy to work on related features at the same time that is the designers can work on the ui at the same time the developers can work on the code ease of testing since mvvm decouples the application logic and the ui it makes the testing more comfortable we don't require a view for performing the testing we can directly perform the testing on the view model which makes a lot easier to write the unit test against the core logic easy maintenance by having the separation between the different parts of an application core it brings a level of structure and uniformity to the code which makes it easy to see where the things should go or where they are likely to be transparent communication the view model provides a transparent interface to the view which it uses to populate the view layer and the interact with the model layer this results in a transparent communication between the different layers of our application i hope you have understood the importance of mvvm how it has to be implemented and the advantages of mvvm in the next video let us understand the concept of triggers